open up um, the ops stage officially with Thomas Knoll. Welcome, Thomas. Hi. I can't believe I'm like you put me in this spot. I don't know what you were. Yes, you're thinking. like the first one. <laughs> <laughs> don't mess things up, please. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's gonna be great. So, um, your session: How to use fidget toys to make ops decision. Cannot wait to hear more. The stage is yours. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, yeah, it's it's a. Uh, Really an honor to be here. Um, and the, the, this, this sounds funny and silly, and I love it because uh, it's going to be almost the opposite of the great keynote that you had, which was dense, very professional information. Um, this, is, uh, this is a whole different thing. This is a game. Um, but uh, just a quick to get into me. Um, Currently, I'm a strategic advisor and executive coach. I work with companies and startups and founders. Um, I do that uh, at Revelry, um, where I've been also COO for the past um, six, seven years and buried in ops. Now we have a great team who's taken over all of that. Um, and I didn't have any interesting facts about myself, so my seven-year-old wanted me to tell you all that uh, wombats poop cubes. So now you have to know that too. You're welcome. Um, so the background of this is um, decisions are so hard. <laughs> I don't know if you've experienced this, but I do. Um, they feel hard. Um, it, this like high stakes if you do like make the wrong one. Um, if you get into a big, long drug out debate about what you're supposed to do they are expensive um they're time consuming the more people have to kind of like get involved and weigh out all the sides um and every minute that you're spending in the middle of trying to make the right decision about one thing it's this massive opportunity cost for all of the other things that we could be doing or deciding at that same time um so how do we short circuit that and fix it. Um, so here's the deal. I believe that um, there's a, is a shortcut um, to making decisions and it's a dartboard. <laughs> um, I call it hanging up the dartboard. When you, when you put something out there as fast as possible, that could be the solution and let people start throwing darts at it and like, no, it's not like that. It's a little bit more like this it makes it so much easier to make that decision. Um, and I have a couple examples, right? Um, one is called, what are we going to eat tonight? Um, and this is also a metaphor, just to be clear. Um, when you get buried in the decision, oh, what are we going to eat tonight? What do you feel like? I don't know. What do you feel like? Well, you just decide. I don't know. What, why don't you decide? Um, instead, I have an answer. Um, every single time I get asked, what should we eat tonight? The answer is Taco Bell. That's it. Um, and immediately, everyone has opinion about what we should eat tonight. Sometimes it's, okay, fine, let's do Taco Bell. <laughs> but most of the time, it's, I don't want Taco Bell. <laughs> I want Italian, obviously. Um, so that's one. Another one, there, you know, you see these pictures of uh, Steve Jobs with the black turtleneck and the jeans. And uh, it looks like he went for some black shoes there for a little while, but usually they were just like the, the, the white shoes. Um, that's what he wore all the time. He didn't think about what he was going to wear. Um, he had much bigger decisions to make. So on things that don't need to be so hard, just having that default decision. Um, another one is called Hell Yeah or No um, from Derek Sievers. And it's every decision we make, it should be a yes, absolutely, we're going to do this, um, or it's a no. If I don't feel like a, it's a hell yeah, then, oh, it's just a no instead. Um, those aren't as practical um, to operating in our businesses. So I want to give some more very real ways we can use these in our own business. 
right? So one is, you know, Slack, Teams, messaging, whatever tools you have, they all have integrations and simple ways to push notifications and build bots that will tell you stuff. So you, we can have something that's like, when the conversion rate on this thing drops below X, um, the bot is going to throw a big, huge, loud message at us and say like, everything's breaking and you need to fix this right now. It doesn't matter if it's not the worst thing in the world or if it's not breaking, knowing that this bot is going to blast the channel um, if it ever dips, um, makes it easier to make decisions that will not trigger that. Or when it does, that we know that like, I'm just gonna stop and do do whatever it takes to fix that thing. Um, it's kind of also like um, uh, pager duty. Um, is a service that does this kind of more in the tech space, but you can also apply this to operations. Um, another one, we have a services business and we have in-state employees and out-of-state employees and it impacts um, a number of different things across the business. Um, and we always want to have the best people um, on the team regardless where they live. Um, and so it can be challenging whenever we have to make a decision every time of where this is, you know, how this hire is gonna impact and if people move and how that's gonna impact. Um, so the fidget tool is just a little basic sheet, in-state, out-of-state ratio. It's supposed to be this percent. And by default, the answer is um, the decision is going to change this ratio. The, the tool says like, you know, it's like shaking a magic eight ball, like, no, you can't do that, right? Now we can have a conversation and change our minds, but the tool just makes the, we're having Taco Bell for dinner type answer. Um, another one is like a new pricing trigger. Um, and so like, you know, again, a lot of different things can impact the kind of ideal pricing for the services. Um, and so just, a simple tool that all it does is say when this, when these things happen, it's going to spit out like, Hey, pricing should be X now. It doesn't automatically roll out new pricing to the business. Um, but it does just tell us like, Hey, this is what the pricing should be. And then it's much easier to have a conversation about, well, the timing isn't right, or actually there's some things this model doesn't take into account and we should change it this way. Or it's just like a simple, hey, that triggered, now we know it's a thing, do this step to go um, roll out the new pricing. Um, another one is a tool from uh, Amazon, um, kind of, they're famous for it. I, I don't know if they made it, right? But this is, it's called write the PR release. Um, so this one's not a spreadsheet or a bot. Um, this one's more like a writing exercise where it's like, if you want to launch a new program, a new plan, a new product, um, step one is write what the PR release is going to be. Share that with the team. And that's like this tool that helps everyone way more quickly get on the exact same page about what the vision of, the outcome of this whole investment in this project is going to be is like, it's going to sound like this when we announce it. Um, and that makes it a lot easier to challenge that push back, ask the right questions or go like, Hey, we're all on the same page. We can do this. Um, two little tips down here, right? These tools are not supposed to be perfect. They're not supposed to be super high fidelity and infallible. Um, they're supposed to just be, a quick and dirty little tool like we're having Taco Bell for dinner <laughs> that uh, forces a conversation much more quickly than, hey, everyone, let's get in a room and ask, what should we do now? Um, the other one is, the, the especially like if you're using a spreadsheet for this, the again, the numbers don't have to be perfect or right. They can be directionally true. They can be kind of based on just rounding uh, roughly, you know, what the impact of things would be. That's okay. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect. It just needs, the tool itself needs to be kind of internally consistent where it's like, um, you know, a science fiction novel with like this, you know, imagines the world very differently. Just all of the books in the series need to 
stick with the same imaginary physics that don't exist here. These tools need to just be internally consistent um, where like if, if these things are true, then it would, it would uh, react this way. Um, the main thing here the, that, uh, that I want to like to take away from this is, is that when people um, feel like decisions are hard and aren't sure how they're made and whether we're going to make them correctly or on time. Um, the, uh, what I found is that these silly tools um, are super helpful, even though they're so silly. Um, they work because everyone feels like the decisions and the outcomes are good and that we're able to make decisions more quickly, helps me feel more confident in the whole process. Um, and we don't have to sit in a spot so long where it's like, are we going to make a decision? What is the right decision? Love it, um, Thomas. Appreciate <laughs> it. Um, well, if there are questions from the audience, you can type them in the chat and we pick them up from there. Great. <laughs> I think uh, there are a couple of reactions to your session, uh, which are particularly so provoking for me. Um, number one, you're essentially offering this idea of like, it can be technology tool, but it can be also like behavioral tools. It's essentially mm -hmm. triggers to stimulate a behavior uh, or like a reaction essentially mm -hmm. that are relatively low stakes yep. yet going somewhere as a starting yep. point. Would you say yep. that that's fair? That's the, that's the real thing. Right. Yeah. It's like, hey, what should we do is just a heavy blanket. It's like, a, conversation. like oh, my God, like a, yeah. that's such a big question. It's like, kind of I've got this little spreadsheet that says that we should double our pricing. And everyone's like, no, we shouldn't. It should be only well, 70 percent. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> and then you have a conversation going. Yeah. yeah. Immediately. Right I love game. that. I love that. Yeah. It's essentially a way to avoid kind of like a analysis paralysis type mm -hmm. of thing right where you spend yeah. like uh days weeks months thinking mm -hmm. about something and packing something theorizing strategizing about yeah. something and then maybe like you don't really get to a meaningful enough decision or a meaningful enough yeah. outcome mm -hmm. and there's a risk to put yourself out there sometimes with like trying to make a very serious recommendation and like what are people gonna say yeah. how are they gonna react right if it's framed in a like you know what we should just go do this Right. It's it's less scary to go ahead and make this recommendation because people are going to respond to it like, you know, like, actually, that's not so crazy. Right. Or, you know, like, that's silly. It should be yeah, whatever. Are you crazy? Hurt. Or, yeah. well, maybe that's not so crazy. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love it. And so question, uh, because essentially this whole thing hinges on the fact that there is someone willing to be that person, mm -hmm. yeah. which, like, for, for your company is you clearly, but like uh, how, and you offered a few options to try this out for other people. Yeah. Uh, is there something like special un underlying this? Like, uh, do you need to be comfortable being wrong or do you need to be comfortable like with people thinking that you're crazy or not necessarily? No, because that's the other piece of this is, is we're also offloading the crazy from one from a personality right. onto these tools, right? Right. That like we start rolling our eyes about the in-state out-of-state ratio bot, right. right? Right. Like instead of the oh, person oh, who feels oh. like they have to like always be the bad person or the good person, or you don't need a person right? because now, no, it's, now this tool, it's this idea. You're the like tool the takes country. on the thing that we're all kind of like throwing darts at and be like, oh, tool, you're silly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It you're takes the pressure off the person. The person from the crazy idea, from the yeah. like triggering yeah. Yeah. Uh, concept or like yeah. proposal. Yeah, make I the tools that. the toy. Not, yeah, not it's the, the tool that's super dumb and crazy and like doesn't understand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love it. I love everything about it. Uh, <laughs> Thomas, thank you so much. This was great uh, for the audience. Let Thomas know how their session was uh, with this quick survey that you can see in the chat. Thomas, we'll see you soon. Thank you so much. It's so good to see you.